um, Elke again. This is part two now of this whole series of presentations on how to safely dive with oceanic white tip sharks here in Egypt. Um, this is as I said part two. Part one uh, was dealing with um, uh, the shark sensory systems. Uh, so now we're talking about uh, oceanic white tip shark biology and their behavior in this one. And then obviously continuing with parts three through to six with the subjects that you can see here. So um, let's talk about some facts about oceanic white tip sharks. Um, oceanic white tip sharks are quite special sharks. Uh, in a lot of ways they're typical, but when it comes to the behavior around divers, they're quite particular, which is why we need to spend so much time talking about them and preparing people how to dive with them. So I just want to explain where this behavior is coming from, because it is quite easily explained from very basic facts about their biology. So let's start a little bit explaining what we're dealing with. Uh, we're dealing with actually a classic so-called requiem shark. And this is what you can see in the first part of the scientific name, the word Carcharinos. It's one of the largest shark families we have. And actually a lot of the sharks that we get to dive with belong to the same family. I'm talking about grey reef sharks, white tip reef sharks, the black tip sharks, both oceanic and the black tip reef shark. So this is the sharks that we're dealing with as divers anyway. Um, now for the second part of the name for the oceanic white tip shark, the word longimanos, where does that come from? That comes from what they look like. The word longimanos is Latin and actually means long hand. So this is a reference to the really long pectoral fins that we can notice on these sharks. That's one way to recognize them as well actually in comparison to other sharks. The other feature, how to recognize them, is this really large rounded dorsal fin that's very, very unique. And then the fact, like the name says, oceanic white tip, most of the fin tips actually of this shark have white tips. Yeah, so this is the best way to recognize them. Um, the next thing, uh, how do we know that it's an oceanic? If we should recognize it from what they look like, but then look at the situation here in this picture. You see here in the background the hull of a mooring liverboard. This is where they are, very shallow, right around the boats. And now, obviously, that's the question, why are they there, where all the other sharks are trying to stay away from human activity? So now we have to dive into the biology a little bit of this animal. Um, generally, these sharks have a global range. That's the first thing that is a bit unusual. So this picture shows you, in this blue area, this is everywhere in the world where you can find oceanic white tip sharks. Um, so a massive area basically to the north and the south of the equator. Yeah, the equator is somewhere here in this area. So everywhere where the water is sort of warm or temperate, anything um, not less than, let's say, 20 degrees on the surface, this is where you will find oceanic white tip sharks. In this whole big area, there's only two places where you can hope to see oceanics on a fairly regular basis. One of them is actually up here, the Egyptian Red Sea, and the other one is a population of the Bahamas on the other side of the Atlantic. But in the Bahamas, they only have adult female oceanics that are coming in there for two months a year, middle of April until about the middle of June, and the rest of the year they don't see them. So pretty much the Red Sea, very unusually, has oceanic white tip sharks pretty much all year round, and we get all the age and sex classes as well. We get the juveniles, we get the sub-adults, we get the fully grown adults, we get males, we get females, so that's very, very special. So what are these sharks doing out there? So generally it's an oceanic shark. So they're normally not connected to islands, to coastlines or reefs. And what are they doing? Roaming around the open ocean, very similar. They're looking for food. And here we come to another specialty of the oceanic white tip shark. If you look at the list of things on this list of potential food items, it's pretty much everything. Oceanic white tips are probably one of the most general opportunistic feeders out there. Yeah, so other bony fish, uh, squid, even other sharks, rays, um, seabirds, turtles, and then different parts of garbage has been found in their stomachs, and they're also known scavengers. So any carcasses floating around, oceanics will gather and they will feed on it. And we know from especially scenes around uh, carcasses floating around, let's say whale, dead whales that are floating around, that oceanics are coming to the sea and they're going to be very aggressive. They're going to try to push other sharks away from that carcass so that they get rid of the competition. Yeah? So we have an aggressive shark, maximum length is generally around 3 meters, uh, that is known to be basically dominating other sharks to push them away. Uh, and then we also have a shark that is pretty much interested in everything as a food source. So that gives you exactly the reason why they show a different behavior towards us as well than other sharks. Because an aggressive shark out of the open ocean with that size doesn't have a lot of natural enemies. 
Yeah, so they're very self-confident. There's not a lot of things that were there to challenge an oceanic white shark. So that's behavior number one, the self-confidence. And then, because they're interested in pretty much everything, they're very curious and very inquisitive. And this is exactly the behavior they show around humans. They approach us with self-confidence and with curiosity. And this is, again, very simply because this is the two behaviors that makes them successful predators in the open ocean. Yeah, it has nothing to do with us, actually, uh, on principle. So this is why they hang around the boats. They're interested in the sounds and the smells coming off the little boats as well. This is why with this shark, you might have very, very close encounters, which if it happens the first time, can actually be quite unnerving. Yeah, this is why we need to talk about them. This is why we need to understand them. Uh, this is why I talked about shark sensory systems first, because all that will help you to understand why the shark is doing what he's doing around divers in the water as well. Okay? All right, so I explained a few shark behaviors in the previous presentation, but let's go through a few more. So we're interacting with an animal underwater, with a wild predator, actually. So how do we recognize if their behavior changes to aggression? They're generally not interested in hurting people. We are not on their menu. They don't know what we are. But again, we're in the water with them, so we need to be careful with them. We need to respect them. So how do we recognize aggression? The good thing is animals in general do not become aggressive for no reason. And also animals in general and sharks are the same. They want to avoid fighting because fighting is dangerous. Fighting can injure them and then they might not survive. So before they get into a fight, they generally want to give each other the option to avoid it. Yeah, so that if you see that the other one is stronger, you can run away or you can do the same. So for this reason, also sharks have developed something that in biology is very well known. It's called a threatening display. A lot of animals have it. The function is to make yourself look bigger and more dangerous so that, that whoever you are meeting gets scared and runs away and does not want to fight with you. And sharks do exactly the same. Um, I will show you an example what the body language looks like in an aggressive or in a threatening shark. The threatening display is a step before aggression, so that this still gives you the chance to back out of a situation. The example that I'm using is actually the grey reef shark, the shark that we encounter here in Egypt as well. And this is a shark that is known to um, actually threaten divers underwater. Not here in Egypt, but in other parts of the world. They get territorial at certain times, so this might trigger a threatening display to a diver that comes into the territory. First, I will show you the baseline calm swimming behavior of a grey reef shark, so that you can see the contrast to the threatening display. So here we go. This is two of our regular males, actually, grey reef shark males uh, at the Brothers. Uh, and you see straight body posture, very small movement of only the tail. This is a relaxed, cruising grey reef shark without any um, other issues going on. Now the same shark um, that wants to threaten somebody would look slightly different. Have a look at this. Here we go. Now the body is totally different. Yeah? The body is in an S shape, the head is up, and the whole body is undulating. Yeah? And this one again. See, from all angles now, this shark looks bigger, not, it's not just horizontal, yeah? So, S-shape of the body, pectoral fins down, head is up, and then the really, really excessive movements from side to side. This is a threatening display. But still, people unfortunately make mistakes with that. Um, it is a really complex display, which is really easy to understand, so that there's no misunderstandings between the sharks as well. So what is not fair, you cannot really take a single behavior out of this one and then say this is aggression as well. A lot of divers, they're coming out of the water and they will say, oh, the shark took the pectoral fins down and I was worried because I thought it was aggressive. That is actually not necessarily the case because the pectoral fin position can be very simply connected to the shark getting ready to turn. Yeah, this is the function of the pectoral fin. So I can show you a series of photographs actually taken of the same shark. Uh, this was taken in Daedalus Reef a few years ago. So this is the same male oceanic, and you see the difference in the pectoral fin position with the different approaches. The first two pictures here, the shark is on a parallel course to the camera already, so not directly coming towards it. So the pectoral fins are staying in the relaxed position on the side. Now the next approach, he came closer. And look here, the pectoral fins are further down already, and he's turning away from the camera. Final approach, closest one, look where the right pectoral fin is. It's right underneath the body of the shark. Yeah, so this is not an aggressive shark. This is a curious shark approaching a large unknown object 
And as he comes closer, he gets ready to turn away. If he keeps the pectoral fins on the side and turns them, it doesn't do much to his direction. The pectoral fin coming down and then turning, it changes direction much, much quicker and much more immediately. And which pectoral fin comes down the furthest, in this case the right one, also tells you in which direction that shark will turn away, because he brings down the right pectoral fin and turns away to his right side. Yeah, so this is not aggression, this is curiosity, and basically just staying calm, enjoying the moment, and once this last approach was done, he lost interest and swam away. And that's what was all that happened, because only the pectoral fin position is not a sign of aggression. Pectoral fins are one of the indicators, though, that the behavioral state of a shark, of a shark is changing. And again, I will show you two examples, and now we're coming to the specifics of the oceanics, really. I will show you two videos again. They were taken, interestingly, in exactly the same place. They're showing exactly the same shark, just with a few minutes between them. And in between these few minutes, the behavioral state of this shark changed from relaxed and confident to being excited about something. And again, you can see it in the body language. So I'll play you the first one, relaxed cruising behavior of the oceanic. Taken at small brother, 2018, here comes the oceanic. Again, like before, straight body position, only the tail is moving, no changes, pectoral fins are spread out. He comes very close, or she, sorry, it's a girl actually, comes very close to the videographer, but doesn't even interact, passes very closely, cruises along, passes another few divers lined up along the reef wall here of her small brother, and then just continues on her way. Yes, this is very typical, confident, very, very calm. And as I said, now just five minutes later, the same diver films the same shark in the same place, but her behavior is totally different. And it's quite easy to speculate what happened, but let's have a look at it first. So here she is now. Look at this, the speed now of her movement of the tail. It's quicker. She changes direction quickly. For the direction changes, she needs to move her pectoral fins as well. And she changes depth now quite quickly as well. None of this just straight cruising without any changes. At the end of this short video clip, and if you see what she's doing, we can then speculate about what happened, because she's going basically straight up to the surface and finds herself next to the bow of a mooring liverboard. And this is where all our kitchens are on liverboards. And I'm not accusing the boat that is there of doing anything wrong. I don't even know which boat it is, actually. Uh, but what this looks like, that something, basically an interesting came out of this boat, potentially from the kitchen drain, simply because they were washing dishes or preparing, preparing food. There was no food thrown in the water, so these guys didn't do anything wrong. But this spreads into the water, she picks it up at depth, she picks up an interesting chemical trail or scent, and then she follows it to the highest concentration. And it's exciting for her. The movement shows that she's excited about this. Uh, the whole thing is actually not a problem. She didn't even interact with the divers, but it's important to recognize this change. This is now an excited shark, and she's potentially excited about finding food. So this is a shark now that should not be approached. Yeah, to recognize this is important so that divers in the water can keep a safe distance from that shark. This is where we're getting at. This is why it's important to understand and try to read the body language of such a predator when you're in the water with it. And yeah, this is the idea. So for diving with oceanics, um, as I said, in a lot of ways they're very typical sharks. So the general shark diving rules also apply to diving with oceanic white tip sharks. So just a few very simple ones. Do not chase or harass them in any way. We're visiting these wild predators in their natural environment, uh, so we don't want to disturb them in any way or don't want to do anything bad. We just want to observe them and be respectful with it. Uh, and of course, you should try to keep your noise and activity levels to a minimum. For most sharks, this is important so that you don't chase them away because they're very shy and timid anyway. For the oceanic, it's actually the other way around. You don't want to attract them any further. They're curious enough as it is, so you don't want to add to that and make yourself even more interesting than they find you already anyway, yeah? just to keep it safe. And of course, a very basic rule, do not touch them. Yeah? Sharks between each other are not physical, they're not, come, they're not pets, so keep your hands to yourself until, and this is going to be part of the later part for the guidelines, it is absolutely necessary and unavoidable. But what I'm talking about is to not just reach out and touch a shark that is just passing by. And again, I'll show you an example, and that will show you a little bit about the potential reaction of a shark like this. 
So we have a video taken in Daedalus a few years ago, and the photographer up there in the left-hand corner, once the shark passes and took a picture, will grab the tail. Now he grabs the tail and look at the reaction of the shark. The shark pretty much freaks out and tries to get away from that situation and almost bumps into other divers around him. And of course, as you see, this one is not very impressed with this at all. Another situation could be that the shark turns around and bites one of the divers, and that is maybe not necessarily even the one that touched it, but maybe just another one that was close. So the reaction to a touch like this is very unpredictable, and that is a very simple reason why it should not happen. Again, I'm wondering sometimes if a person like this would get out of the car in the Serengeti and pull the tail of a lion that is lying around there. It's a similar thing, it's a wild predator, so do not disrespect them and do not underestimate the potential consequences of what you're doing to an animal like this. Yeah, this is very, very important. Okay, and that brings me really to another point that I wanted to mention, something to remember with any shark that you're diving with, but especially with confident, curious animals like oceanics, respect them for what they are. This is a wild predator. We visit them in their environment. And while they're generally not interested in harming us, if anything goes wrong in an interaction, it will go wrong for us. They're so superior to us in this medium, uh, that is very, very clear. So we need to be respectful and we need to be careful uh, so that we're not creating dangerous situations with them. And the easiest way to do this, and this will be continued for the next two presentations when we talk about uh, guidelines and safe diving practices, very important a headline, avoid anything that makes you look like potential prey or food to these sharks. And just a quick additional sentence before I give you the details in the next two presentations. It means that you have to at least appear self-confident as well when you're meeting such a confident predator. And how to do that will be the subject of the next two presentations. So this concludes part number two. Uh, thank you very much.